I survived five days of government-mandated unarmed security training. As is often the case with government-mandated training, much time was wasted with unnecessary filler material. In fact, I have accepted the challenge of telling you everything from unarmed security class that you need to know in the next 10 minutes. Can I do it? You be the judge. Hang on. Here we go. This video uses sample questions that have been taken from the Security Officer Network's online test and unarmed security prep guide. Both are free at securityofficernetwork.com. The first thing you need to know, most of the questions on the test are common sense. They aren't hard. For example, observe and report. As you take your state exam, remember, state officials want to know that you aren't going to do anything crazy, but you will be a trained eyewitness. Know the difference between a fact and a conclusion, and put together at least three or four halfway succinct words in a written report, and explain that report to your company's client, insurance officials, the police, and in court. Watch this. Quick, what object did the yellow-coated woman hold in her right hand? As you take your security class, expect that your instructor will show you a clip like this one and ask you to repeat back details. Pay special attention to the hands of people in the clip. Your instructor should teach you to always observe people's hands. Okay, so you have a great memory, are very observant, and remember every single detail about that clip. Can you write a coherent report? Memorize this. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Do not forget these. This is one of the most important questions on the test. What are the components of a complete incident report? The answer, who, what, when, where, why, how. Got it? Who, what, when, where, why, how. Who was involved? What happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Why did it happen? How did it happen? Fact or conclusion. Facts are good. Conclusions are bad. Facts are good. Conclusions are bad. The customer opened and drank a beer. The trespasser was injured while climbing the fence. The vagrant intended to steal the cell phone. Select the conclusion. Do you see why it's the conclusion? How could it become a fact? The subject admitted that he intended to steal the phone. Select the statement that best illustrates a fact. Okay, so C is probably true. After all, your security company is taking away contracts from off-duty police. But you can't describe his intent. You can only describe his actions and his statements. Got it? So now, it's months later and you are in court. What steps should the security guard take before she goes to court for either a deposition or witness stand testimony? So this is an easy answer, but it's something that must be stressed. Court hearings take place months after the incident. It's easy to forget what happened. Review your report, stick to the narrative, don't ad lib. Your report was written immediately after the incident, and it's much more dependable than your memory. If you stick to your report, it will be much harder for the opposition to trip you up. Imagine what would have happened had you put a conclusion into your report. The defense attorney would ask, How do you know my client intended to steal the phone? Are you a mind reader? Can you read my mind right now? Because if you can, you will know that I think you have no credibility and need to be retrained. Now, Aren't you glad you took this course before you put a conclusion into your report? That'll be $75. What's the matter with you, you jerk? We had it all right now! Arrest power and tactical communications. This is Ryan. This is Ryan. This is Ryan. What are you yelling about? Like you said, you broke the law by making an illegal U-turn, and I hereby, as a citizen of the town of Mayberry in the United States of America, arrest you. Hooray! That's right. You have the exact same arrest power as Gomer. In most states, your arrest powers are limited to the powers reserved to a citizen to make a citizen's arrest. In most jurisdictions, you are empowered with making a private person's arrest, 
if a person commits a crime in your presence or if a third person tells you that someone has committed a felony. For the record, a felony offense is an offense that's punishable by a year or more in state prison. You don't have to memorize every felony, but expect the exam to test your common sense and ability to know the difference between a serious crime and a minor infraction. Here's an example. What type of offense most likely constitutes a misdemeanor? A obviously describes a felony, B is a civil matter, and C describes what is likely a misdemeanor offense. Of course, in most instances, you will not need to make an arrest if you have strong tactical communication skills. Which statement best describes tactical communication? At first glance, this can be confusing. Despite its name, tactical communications do not refer to security response strategy or radio communications. Answer B correctly describes the amazing skill set of diffusing situations before they become real security issues. Learn this skill set and get good at it, and you will be an invaluable asset to your employer. Trespass and Access Control So you don't have the same detention powers as a police officer, but depending on your company's policies, you are endowed with the power of eviction. As the security officer, you are the representative of the property owner, and you have the power to evict someone from the property on behalf of the property owner. If they refuse, or if they return to the property, then they are subject to arrest for trespass. This is an important power, so you must know what constitutes trespass. Check out this question. Trespass laws vary from state to state. Keeping this in mind, which of the following best describes trespass? At first glance, you will want to choose B. After all, if someone jumps a fence, isn't that trespass? Probably not. In many jurisdictions, a person is only trespassing if they stay on or return to the property after being told to leave or not return, or if they ignore clearly posted no trespassing signs. Don't let answer B trick you. Answer A is correct. the basics, and state licensing. What is the commonly accepted name for the directives that govern the conduct of the officer while on duty? Your employer will provide a list of post orders for you to follow while you work your shift. These may include how often you should patrol, how to handle specific emergencies, what types of forms and reports to file. Which statement best defines the role of the unarmed security guard? Here the test seeks to ensure that you know you are not a cop, you're primarily a deterrent, and if you're not successful in deterring, you are a skilled witness. It's not your job to enforce laws. Which term best describes the conditions that must be noted by the officer upon arriving at the scene of an incident? Transient conditions are those factors that are in flux or may change before law enforcement investigators arrive on the scene. The description of a person rapidly walking away from the scene, weather conditions and climate, anything that is in a state of change, even the position of the sun. An incident that happens at dusk is a relevant fact because by the time the police arrive, it may be night, and at night, the sun goes away. But you probably already knew that. Just remember the term transient conditions. Here's another term that you must remember. Situational awareness. Situational awareness dictates that an officer constantly monitors her surroundings and is aware of her conditions at all times. You will probably get a question or two about radio. It's easy, common sense stuff like speak clearly, etc. Just keep an eye out for the question that asks you to describe when not to use a radio. The answer is when in close proximity to a possible explosive device. Officers are taught to avoid using their radios near explosive devices because there's fear that the radio might detonate the explosive. Fire. Know your fire extinguishers. You are very likely to be tested on this. A grease fire has started in the kitchen of a Bel Air restaurant. The guard grabs a fire extinguisher and rushes to respond. What class of fire extinguisher will put out a grease fire? Learn the differences between fire types and the extinguishers that put them out. Finally, your state will seek to ensure that you understand key aspects of their state's licensing laws. 
so study your state regulations. These are posted on the web. You will also see some licensing questions such as this. Which best describes the conditions that require a licensed security officer to immediately notify the state licensing agency? So, did I tell you everything you needed to know in 10 minutes? You be the judge. Go take the practice test at securityofficernetwork.com forward slash test. You must score 75% to pass. Drop a comment and let me know if you pass. Or you can cheat and read the network's unarmed security prep guide before you take the test. It has many more sample questions like these. Did I cover the key concepts? What did I miss? Drop your thoughts into the comments and subscribe for future content a lot like this.